As our weather warms up and my schedule freed up a bit, I'm starting to do plein air again. While an enjoyable experience, it is definitely not easy for me. Today I want to share with you a little bit of the process of this plein air painting, how I approached it, and the struggle and challenges that I faced. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Plein air painting has been romanticized in such a way that if you don't do plein air, it's almost as if you are not a real artist. I fall into this peer pressure at times. However, plein air painting is not easy. To me, it almost feels like a test. You have a limited time to produce a good painting under a lot more influence than you are at home or a studio. Your setup is likely not as complete. Things like lighting can change, people in the scene will move around, and there are noises. And you might get some audiences asking you questions while you paint. I actually met two lovely young ladies there while I was painting. So, hi Abby and Romy, nice to meet you and thank you for your company. And if you're in Washington and you happen to see me painting outdoor, Come and say hi, okay? I would love to meet you. Anyways, the point is that plein air, while enjoyable, is not as easy. So I want to share with you the process of my recent plein air experience. So for the setup, I can go over my plein air setup in another video. I'm actually thinking about simplifying it further. Right now, I have a modified pocha box, a small aluminum palette with colors already squeezed in and dried. And I have four brushes, a pencil, and an eraser. And of course, I use watercolor pad, so I don't need to bring another board. Since it's a park, I found a picnic table next to the lake, so that makes things easier. Now, the next thing is location. In my case, I didn't really pick the location. My wife took the kids to meet up with some friends for play day at the park. I was just tagging along. I did pick the scene though. The park is next to a lake, so I walked around, found a good scene to paint. I made a video about picking your subjects before. You can go and watch that one for more tips on that. The general idea is to find a major shape that's easy to read and hopefully easy to paint. And remember, you have limited time, so don't pick something really complex unless you have the confidence to simplify that scene. Once you pick the scene, do a value study first instead of going straight into painting if the time allows. It helped me to come up with a solid plan for the painting. Okay, so this is the first wash for the value study. So this is just the whole major shape from background mountains to the middle ground house and trees and everything. The foreground tree as well. And I actually make the foreground sand also a middle value, even though I was tempted to make it a light value, but I think middle value will work better in this case. So the only light value, of course, the sky and the bright water and the sand in the beaches and stuff. A value study is also a great process to simplify what you see. Keep your camera handy, things move around and change. So if you happen to see something you really like, snap a quick photo for your own reference. While I was painting, I saw two people paddleboarding. I thought they would look great in painting. Knowing that they will paddle away very soon, I took a quick photo for reference later. Lastly, and this is what I learned from Joseph's book Vich, don't compare your painting with the real scenery. When you look at the subject and you look at your pathetic attempt, it's very easy to lose that famous uh, ingredient, and that is faith. And you say, this is just rubbish, this is awful, and give up and say, I can't paint. The trick is to now go home and have a look at it properly without the competition of the magnificence of what you're looking at, because you cannot compete with that. The amazing thing transformation happens. You bring this to the studio, you look at it, and the memory of this floods into your painting. I spent an hour or so trying to capture a scenery that has been there long before me, so there's no way I can compete. This is important because if you try too hard, you will likely overwork your painting, and that usually doesn't end up looking good. Okay, so I kind of start my first wash with a second wash, so I got more time, but yeah, now I have to start to paint some of the wet onto wet dark immediately so that I can still get a little bit of a soft effect in there. So obviously after a second wash and I start to add a little bit more dark and it starts to separate the shape a lot better. 
and it started to just give a little bit more detail to a rather simplified painting. Obviously, plein air is not the easiest thing, but I managed to simplify as much as possible. Again, this is the value study, and here is the final painting. And again, here is the scenery. A lot more people came, a lot of kids, including mine. So I didn't record the full process of this painting, only some footage, but I still hope this video is helpful for you. It is hard to record video outdoor by myself, but hopefully next time I will be able to do that. Again, plein air is like a test of skill for me. It takes practice and experience. While I encourage everyone to do it, if it is not something you enjoy doing, I am not going to be the artist to shame you for not doing it. Get more practice done in the studio and try it out again when you feel ready. That's it for today's video. If you like my content, please consider giving a like and subscribe. Ring the bell icon so you won't miss out my next video. If you're new here, click here to sign up and get my fast track watercolor PDF guide and some bonus video. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.